search engines are dead and the future are answer engines. Do you find yourself using ChatGPT a lot more than you're using Google? In this clip from Mind the Machine podcast, Julie Wright, the founder and president of Write On Communications, breaks down how AI is fundamentally changing the way we think about SEO. She explains why search engines are giving way to something she calls answer engines and how this shift is creating both challenges and opportunities for brands and communicators. Search engine optimization, SEO, is a term that I hope your listeners would be very familiar with. Generative engine optimization, GEO, is what they are calling this new field. And there are other terms I've heard as well, like answer engine optimization. And, you know, the the thinking right now is that search engines are dead and the future are answer engines. And so if you are optimizing for an answer engine, you are optimizing to be found by a Google overview summary. So you want to either be cited and have your link provided by Google, or you want to have ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, actually include your content in their own summaries. People are turning to the AI platforms to do their research. And quite often, the AI platform doesn't even provide a citation. They just summarize what they've retrieved across the web and provide the information. In fact, uh, with Google AI overviews, research shows that uh, 60% of searches do not click at all. So that's something called zero-click attribution. Folks are saying that's the future of the internet. I mean, that we will be moving away from little blue links and, uh, you know, scrolling through the top 10 websites, even amongst the top ranked websites in a search term. They saw a decline of uh, organic search traffic equal to over 34% once AI overviews came in. So without people clicking on the internet anymore, how do you influence these AI platforms and generative engine optimization or GEO is applying a selection of uh, practices to optimize not a page on a website, but optimize a brand across the internet. And again, it's just a fancy way of saying public relations when I when I reverse engineer it all. Yeah, no, and I'm as I'm listening to you speak and having been in PR for a very long time with similar backgrounds in the sense it started out as a journalist. And you know, we really understand that there's a huge delta in between ads and earned, you know, journalism, editorial coverage. And so if I vibing with what you're saying is that you really are almost now getting earned like media attribution, but even though you're using traditional tools, is that a fair way to think about it? Yes. I mean, so public relations exists to influence a brand's publics. Okay, so those are their stakeholders, whether that's customers in a more marketing focused application, but it could be the community if it were about a project. It could be donors for a nonprofit. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But ultimately, I think people think of public relations as publicity first and foremost. And when they are uh, focused on publicity, that's influencing media. And media become this third-party intermediary that when they cover your brand, there's an implied endorsement, right? Well, you must be important. You're getting this media coverage. But in addition, you're also getting a more credible message out to people because it's coming through a third party that you know, we all believe has standards in accuracy and and fairness and so on. So, I mean, that's the power of uh, earned media in PR. Well, a lot of the same practices that apply to earning attention with journalists and, and media apply to LLMs. And as it turns out, LLMs or AI platforms are citing news sources 27% of the time. So if you think about all the different sources out there across the internet, media and news sites have a much higher impact in terms of potential discovery through a citation or a reference in a summary. Three thoughts here. One, first thought is, you know, the old adage is, I can say I'm cool, but it's much more powerful if you say I'm cool, right? (laughs) <laughs> and I love that. This is how I explain uh, PR to my husband. And he's like, oh, okay, now I get it, right? I want the cool kid to say I'm cool. 
right? So that's that's a one observation, one way to look at it. The second thing is the uh, term answer engine. So when I think about uh, large language model platforms in general, um, you know, we do think about Gemini, Grok, uh, ChatGPT, of course, uh, but. Uh, perplexity. Perplexity seems to sit outside of that. And I know many of these platforms are multimodal uh, and they still have links for sourcing. Where do you think perplexity sits in terms of this as an as an answer engine? That's how I've always thought of perplexity. Perplexity. And I was reading about some of this uh, just yesterday because I'm noticing like all the different platforms are aligning with different news outlets, licensing content. And so I think perplexity is more of an aggregator that way. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what contracts or what, you know, I have a note somewhere and I can probably go pull it up. But OpenAI has the most deals with publishers, so news organizations and outlets. There's something I thought that was quite interesting that I hadn't been aware of, but there's a AI out there called ProRata AI. And it was started by Bill Gross at Idea Lab. And his idea was, you know, we can't destroy journalism by scraping these these sites and utilizing all of the information that uh, these news organizations have invested in producing for people and then giving them no attribution, taking away their eyeballs. That is how they, you know, make money from advertising. So pro rata and perplexity when they make a deal with a news publisher, they share revenue with that news publisher. So perplexity is using advertising on its search results. Like, so when you use that as an answer engine, you may be exposed to some ads, but those ads and revenue from those ads are being shared with the publishers who help source that information. Pro rata, it actually has a algorithm that will break out, okay, how much of our answer was supplied by which media outlet? And then they re- they compensate the media outlets depending on the portion Percentage, that they contribute, yeah. which is really, you know, innovative. And so I think yeah. that there's, you know, it's early days and there are a lot of different models, but I was a bit, you know, pleased to see that there's some creativity and I think some fundamental fairness in that pro rata model if you care about journalism and and you're worried well what happens if we don't have that original reporting and sourcing of information to actually feed this this model make sure you're subscribed to mind the machine podcast like the video and leave a comment letting us know what you thought